Welcome to Austin Faith Dialogue. People of faith share so much in common. And in those common experiences, we celebrate that which we believe God gives to us. On this Austin Faith Dialogue program, we're going to talk about some of the tough choices we have as people of faith. Please stay with us on Austin Faith Dialogue. Austin Faith Dialogue, at the crossroads of religion and life. A series highlighting the cultural and social interactions between the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KXAN. Join us now in Austin Faith Dialogue. Does it seem strange to you as a person of faith that there are tough choices we have to make we can pray to God and we can worship God, but we can also do work together. And we're going to talk about some of the ways that we can learn how to work together for social justice and for that which is righteousness in the kingdom of God. With me today on Austin Faith Dialogue, I have Mary Berwick. and Mary, welcome. And Dave Farnham, who is new to the Austin community. Right, Dave? Amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. And Gail Miller, who's been a leader in our community for a long time. Well, Gail, I did make to meet you. Not old, but you've been around a while <laughs> helping us. It's been yeah. a long time. <laughs> Thanks for being with us on Austin Page Dialogue. Good to have you back. Mary, um, we are the people of God, and we share faith together. And there was a man who touched our lives through these years that we've all been together in the Austin community, Father Walter Dalton. There's a lecture series that the Paulist Fathers sponsor, and I'd like you to tell us a little bit about Father Walter Dalton, would you please? Yes, I very pleased to do so. I think I first met Father Dalton when I was a, I am a parishioner at St. Austin's Parish, and when I was uh, a principal at the school at St. Austin's, I would sometimes meet him in the parking lot, and I knew that he was very involved with an organization called Volunteers for Educational and Social Services, of which he was a co-founder. And uh, that was a, a Catholic organization, still is, which is, in a way, the best way to describe it is as a Catholic <coughs> vista, mm -hmm. maybe, where people, gradu young graduates come from other parts of the country and they work in poor areas of the state of Texas and they're sponsored by, the, uh, by VES and by the Conference of Catholic Bishops. But when I got into ecumenical work, it was really through peace work. And uh, Walter Dalton at the time was very involved with the Austin Area Conference of Churches. Mm -hmm. He was president for a time, and I think mm -hmm. I met you maybe through the Austin Area Conference of Churches. And he was the last president, I think, of the Austin Area Conference of Churches before it went out of existence and Austin Metropolitan Ministries was born. But it was his openness to, uh, to everybody, his uh, very pastoral interest in you as an individual, mm -hmm that I think touched hearts very much. And he was a very determined sort of person. <laughs> I remember Gail talking about him when we had the first Dalton lecture. And um, Gail gave a sort of introduction of her memories of, of Walter Dalton. And it was that he, he, he wanted to get things done. You know what he I'm was so thankful for, Mary, is that there's yeah. a legacy from his life. Because we yeah. share together as people of faith in the old Austin Area Conference of Churches. And he gave his witness there. But he had a bigger vision. Yes. of the religious community, people of faith. And you asked me before we went on the air, what would I say? And what I'd say about Walter Dalton is he had such a big heart. You know, he had a great body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? He but was he a great a, tennis player. Oh, he was. Well, that, apparently, I, didn't know I that heard about, about yeah. that. Yes. But what a, what a heart he had for people and for love of God. Mm -hmm. Now, Mary mentioned, Dave, a couple words that I want you to talk mm -hmm. about, all right? Uh, it's a tricky word. It's a religious word. Ecumenical, and yes. Dave Farnham here. Welcome to Austin, and we Thanks. give you this big task to explain to our viewing audience. <laughs> what about this word, ecumenical? I'm not a wordsmith, but I know how I live that word out, and uh, I, as a member of the Paulist Fathers, the Catholic religious order here in Austin, uh, we live this out as a response to the Second Vatican Council, that gathering of Catholic bishops from around the world in 1962 to 65, and the bishops called us Catholics to open up our lives and our hearts to the experience of God in other peoples um, and cultures and languages. And so that meant that God uh, you know, communicates to, uh, to all people in all different ways. And so you know, we can learn about God by uh, having dialogue with brothers and sisters in faith who may not share the Catholic faith, 
but who may be um, a member of a Protestant tradition or may be uh, completely interfaith, whether it be Buddhist or Jewish or Muslim, and that we can all learn about God from one another. Mm -hmm. So this has been an activity of ours for 30 years, and it's one that the Paulus Fathers uh, particularly spend a lot of our time doing. You know, I talked in the intro about tough choices, mm -hmm. and maybe for people of faith, <coughs> one of the tough choices that we have is to be ecumenical, sure. to be open to other people of faith, and to be willing to, to learn from them. Because I don't think, Dave Farnham, that you as a priest of the Roman Catholic tradition within the church wants to give up your heritage. Absolutely. I am proud of it. I'm proud to be a Roman Catholic, and yet I know there is so much that I benefit from and learn about God when I talk to people of other perspectives and other and other faith traditions. It helps me just realize how big my God actually is. So it, it doesn't threaten, it, it enhances my, uh, my experience of God. Gail Miller, you have been a leader in the ecumenical community here in Austin, and I've always admired your leadership, and not only you, but your husband, your family, the way that you all participate. Tell our viewing audience a little bit about you and, and your faith community. Well, I'm a member of Congregation Beth Israel. We are a Reformed Jewish community, and that translates to being a more liberal um, interpretation of how we live our faith. We've been active um, in our own Jewish community for many, many years, and it was a true honor when really Father Dalton started Austin Metropolitan Ministries along with other ministers such as you, uh, you. who opened up their lives and their faith to people of faiths other than Christianity. So you knew Walter Dalton, and now there is a lecture series yes. as part of the legacy of his life, uh, a taste of eternal life that we continue to remember exactly. him in this lecture series. And if you're Jewish, you say he was a mensch. He was a real kind, <laughs> sweet, big-hearted man. How, how do you spell that word? M-E-N-S-C-H, I think. Okay, I like that. I like that. A mensch. A mensch. Yeah, I think we could say that about him. Yeah. He was truly a mensch. He was that type of man. And wouldn't he be embarrassed to hear us talking about <laughs> him this way? <laughs> He'd be saying, oh, you guys, don't yeah. be doing that kind of stuff, you know. But we are talking about him. And there's going to be a lecture series coming up here in Austin. That's what we want to invite the viewing audience to attend. Oh, so yes. tell us about America. The, the Dalton Lecture, yes. I'm uh, co-chair of the steering committee of the Dalton Lecture with Michael Guerra, who is uh, the executive director of VES that I talked about earlier. He succeeded Walter Dalton. And uh, Michael and I are as I say, the steering committee and Dave and Gail are active members of the steering committee. This uh, is the second Dalton lecture. After Walter died of a brain tumor in 1995, um, it sort of came about just in talking at St. Austin's and other places that uh, to commemorate him in some, in some way, uh, rather than a monument or a picture or anything, would be to do something to continue uh, the, the sort of work that he did. And so we came up the, with the idea of the Dalton Lecture, and we had one in 1997. And then we didn't get our act together for a second one until 1999, so maybe they're going to be every second year. We haven't decided that yet. But uh, this lecture will take place on October the 5th at 7.30 p.m. at Congregation Agudas Akim, the uh, synagogue, the conservative synagogue. Am I right That's in right. saying uh -huh. that? Up on Bull Creek Road, Rabbi uh, Pasternak, uh, Martin Pasternak has graciously uh, given us the sanctuary of the, of, the, of the temple of the congregation to use, the synagogue. And we have a visiting speaker from out of town whose name is Albert Vorspan, and he is a Jewish layman, has been very active in all issues, and Gail can tell a bit more about that. But he is coming into town to give the lecture on the evening of the, the 5th. It is free, open to the public. We invite particularly people in, uh, in all congregations, all faith traditions, the interfaith community in Austin, who uh, are sparked with curiosity by the title which he has given to, because he gave us the title, Tough Choices, the Religious Community mm -hmm. and Social Justice. So what so, we're doing on this program mm -hmm. is inviting the Austin Faith Dialogue community, those yeah. watching the program, <clears throat> to be aware that this is gonna happen now, they have to make some choices, and with the busy schedules people have, why do you think, who wants to take this? Why do you think they should come to this event that's going to be held on October 5th? Dave, can you handle that? What, well, who what would be of the us, advantage? Who of us can make tough, dis uh, tough choices on our own? I mean, we need to struggle with uh, everyday issues, um, and we don't deal with these issues in a vacuum. They affect our families, our friends, our 
local communities, our global communities. And so if we can come together as a faith community, a community that believes in a higher power, um, a higher power that created us mm -hmm. and presumably created us for good and uh, for love. Mm -hmm. um, and so out of love, how do we respond to these tough choices um, that life presents us with? Uh, and so coming together as a community, I think we can, uh, we can make tough choices uh, supporting one another much better than we can on our own. One of the issues I think we always have dealt with uh, since I've been a pastor is that we are congregational. We have parishes, congregations that we're a part of. And to take that step maybe beyond the, the walls of the congregation it is a difficult choice because most all temples and congregations and whatever faith community belong to have so many things going on within the life of their communities. But this Gale is an opportunity for them to experience something beyond their local congregation. Absolutely. It's a wonderful opportunity. First of all, they are going to hear a speaker who is totally dynamic. This gentleman <laughs> has such a sparkle in his eye. And not only has he talked the talk, but he's really been there to walk the walk. Mm -hmm. he's, he's been in civil rights work for many years when it was pivotal, uh, as it still is. He is he's uh, a remarkable man, a sparkle in his eye. He will help us come to conclusions based on our own faith backgrounds. And this is also an opportunity for us to network, to be with people in the whole community, and to be able to share what perspective we come with to help solve some of the problems our community is experiencing every day. Mm -hmm. Mary, what do you want to add to that? Well, I just wanted to say, yes, the part of the evening's plan is that um, Albert Vorspan will speak, but we will have an o o two open microphones, you know, in the, in the box. The, the sanctuary so that people can uh, come and talk and discuss and not just bring the problems but also sort of be able themselves to say well this is something good that is happening that we are trying to do uh, in our own faith communion be it dealing with 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 hunger homelessness racism whatever would those be some of the topics you know, and then that people, that it... well i i don't know mm -hmm. I, I was thinking list that if people mm -hmm. were listening and we keep saying you know tough choices and we haven't mentioned anything <laughs> well, I thought we should but of course we're leaving it to him to 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 bring up the issues yeah, but we have a little they're bit the more, issues I think of we have a little more of this program so we're gonna have to try to <laughs> fill some of that time too so we're gonna talk about some of those tough choices and what we want you to do we're gonna take a break and and talk to you about Austin Metropolitan Ministries but we want you to stay with us because we will talk about some of those tough choices and the speaker will come for the Dalton lecture series please stay with us in Austin Faith Dialogue thank you mention that. Welcome back to Austin Faith Dialogue. Mary's just telling me what I should say and what I shouldn't say, but that's good, all right? <laughs> this is a wonderful program. <laughs> Walter would have a, a good time with this. Uh, we're talking about the Dalton Lecture Series. They're going to be held the 5th of October, and uh, we're talking about um, the man who's going to come and speak to us, and Gail, he's coming from New he's York coming City? coming from New York City. He operates out of New York City and also has an office in Washington, D.C. And tell us a little bit more. In the first part of the program, you did mention some of his uh, charisma, some of his, uh, his things that he's done. Tell our viewing audience some of the other things he's done. Well, this is a gentleman who, ha first of all, is the author of several books on social justice. He's marched with Martin Luther King. He's spoken to the United Nations. He is uh, a co-founder of something called the Religion, Religion Act. 
Center in Washington, D.C., which is really one of the quintessential religious lobbying groups in the, uh, in the nation's capital. Mm -hmm. Um, he's a remarkable man, a married gentleman with four kids, mm. so he struggled with all the things that we all struggle with yeah. on a daily Parenting basis. Parenting process, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well conversant with issues of hunger and homelessness. Right. Uh, Dave, you serve in campus ministry at yes. UT, is that correct? Correct. Uh, what's your reaction to this? When I think about the issues, the faith community can come together in, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. where we can identify one another as people who um, are in relationship with God. But these issues then when we start talking about homelessness, mm -hmm. hunger, mm -hmm. uh, civil rights, yeah. peace issues, sometimes those, those fragment us and divide the faith sure. community. Sure. How can we uh, reach out uh, to the people of the community and say, come let's dialogue about this? Well, I'm rooted in, in my faith tradition which tells me that Jesus Christ uh, did not live and suffer and die and rise so that things could stay the same. I firmly believe that Jesus Christ came to change. And I think uh, change was necessary 2,000 years ago. I think change is necessary today because there is so much uh, hunger and homelessness and racism and every ism that you can think of, so much that divides us um, that I think that, uh, that uh, seeking unity, seeking more love and compassion and mercy uh, in our lives is uh, is is a necessity right now. You mentioned the Paulist Fathers have responded mm -hmm. to the Vatican II. Sure. And the call and the invitation to open up to other cultures, yeah. other faith expressions. Mm -hmm. Do you think, as some people say, and, and I'm not a cynic, <laughs> uh, but I've heard people say that rather than going towards a sense of unity and respect for faith communities, mm -hmm. that we are, we are more fragmented than ever before. Mm -hmm. Dave Farnham, Roman Catholic priest, what's your thought on that? <clears throat> I, feel, I feel the separation and the disunity that exists. Yet, working on a college campus uh, where there are students and professors from all walks of life, all faith traditions, um, come together on a daily basis uh, for common good. You know? And so I think that in a university setting, uh, we can learn uh, that by coming together and by bringing our different gifts um, and our different stories about who God is um, benefits us all. And, uh, and that is the work that we're about at the University Catholic Center. Uh, we work very closely with the community of university ministers um, at, uh, and the different faith traditions on the campus. And that microcosm of, of uh, building bridges is what's going to, uh, to give us a model for our other lives. You have somewhat of an advantage, though, don't you think, in terms of being on the university campus? Now, you know, yes. you have the right to differ with me. On the Amen. <laughs> All right? <laughs> but it would seem to me that there you have a mission, an educational mission right. on the college campus, that we don't have that same advantage in the, the broader sure. community. Sure. Albert Vorspan, did I say his name correctly? He's going to be our speaker, right? He has been termed an activist. Now, if anybody in the community has been an activist, Mary, you have been an activist, mm -hmm. and I will tell anybody, that I say that with respect and admiration for you, all right, as a person I care for very much. What do you think in the broader community, Dave has talked about the campus community and what they do in their campus ministry. What are ways that we can deal with some of the tough choices? What are some of the issues, Mary, that you see that the faith community, those who are watching this program, Austin Faith Dialogue, can begin to struggle with? You know, we don't have all the answers, do we? No, indeed, we don't have all the answers, but, uh, well, the, the hunger issue is a big thing, the hunger and homelessness, because I was reading something recently about, you know, all the uh, revision of the welfare program, mm -hmm. that, and there's so much pride, uh, you know, in Washington, in Congress, that so many people are off the welfare rolls. And I read an article about the disappearing poor, that just because people are not able or are not now coming to welfare and maybe people are more employed at very low paying jobs uh, that uh, we don't sort of see or there's a hidden poverty mm -hmm. in the US and I think that many of our congregations are very aware of that. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the faith communities can see the, the need uh, and people who come asking for food uh, to parishes. I mean, they come to St. Austin's. Surely. And so, so we see it. The problems with rent, the problems with paying for utilities. Mm -hmm. uh, 
peop there, there, there's a lot of poverty there. Let still. me ask you this, though, Mary, and Gail, yeah. jump into this. And Dave, yeah. do you do you believe that um, in our day, 1999, do you believe that the religious leadership of the community? And now we're talking about Austin, but Dave, you just came from Berkeley a while back, and you grew up in Providence, Rhode Island, so you've been around the country. The religious leaders, are they sensitive to that reality of the poverty, or are they caught up, and I'm one of them, okay, mm -hmm. in, in those issues that face the religious leadership in congregational settings? What do you, what do you think? Are you optimistic or are you pessimistic? Gail, what do you, what's your thought? Well, my thought is that it's awfully hard to keep up with your own congregation and there's a lot of draws on a religious leader's time mm -hmm. and they want to be there for everything and they have to be able to um, help their community be their arms into the community as well. That's why it's, I think it's a big responsibility for all of us here to be emissaries from our faith communities to act upon our faith issues. What I'm thinking you see in asking that question, Gail, is that I'm thinking that those who watch this program will go back to their leadership and say, this Dalton lecture series is going to happen on Tuesday the 5th of October and we may not agree with this guy who's coming from the Big Apple, yeah. <laughs> yeah. coming from New York City and he may be too liberal for us or too this or too that or too much of an activist but maybe, maybe we need to be challenged by him and there will be challenge there, don't you think? Oh, I think very definitely there will be challenge and I, I, I'm thinking also as Dave was talking about, you know, he sees the students regularly and a lot of us in the, in the parish don't always see the, the younger people. I would hope that we'd have a lot of young people coming mm -hmm. to this. I would invite uh, both youth ministers in parishes and youth groups and, and young adults to come and to, uh, to listen to Albert Morspan and to see what, uh, you know, what the challenges are. I mean, there are big things in the state of Texas, as you well know, I witness regularly at the time of every execution. The death penalty mm -hmm. in the state of Texas is a very big thing, mm -hmm. and we're not all unified in uh, the whole faith community, I think, on that one. Mm -hmm. According to the statistics, uh, most people whom I meet, uh, you know, are just revolted by the number of uh, executions in Texas. And last night we executed a dying man, mm -hmm. uh, you know, dying of liver cancer, but, you know. So another so, anyway, one of so the tough issue. choices it's and tough issues thing. that we have to talk about, and hopefully the dream maybe of the Dalton Lecture Series and you're on the steering committee is to provide that type of forum. Yes, exactly. Be, he, he'll be a catalyst, we hope, and the, the event will be a catalyst to, uh, to encourage us, I hope, and also to challenge mm -hmm. and disturb us a little maybe. Maybe to disturb us, Dave. And on being, uh, on being a member of the steering committee, our main goal was not to make people feel comfortable and feel cozy and uh, warm and fuzzy. <laughs> um, you know, if, if, this, if this lecture disturbs people, if this lecture angers people, mm -hmm. uh, amen. You know, the, yeah. uh, Jesus Christ did not come to, uh, he came to uh, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And we need, if we are comfortable in our, in our day and age here in Austin, Texas, then I'd question, you know, do we have a right to be comfortable? You know, I don't want to make light at all of what you just said, but I was thinking when Mary was talking about hoping there'd be a lot of university students and young adults that she was really putting some uh, pressure on you, Dave, to produce <laughs> it. And I was going to offer our congregation's van if you want to you yes. know, uh, get some great. of those over there. And as long as there's food, we, there will be reception there'll later. Be reception <laughs> later, our there will be Our students will be there. You know, we can get some of the students there. I, I want to ask you, do you think that the, the university students, the college students of today, I'm a, a 60s product, and yes. there was all kinds of stuff going on in yes. the 60s. You could tell by my gray hair, right, that that's where <laughs> I came from. But I'm wondering, are they comfortable today like many of our congregations are comfortable? Do they want to deal with some of the tough choices? Or are they interested maybe, and I'm, you know, asking you to be candid, are they really interested in being into the good job? Of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, um, I believe that our students are too comfortable now, mm -hmm. way too comfortable. Um, and yet, I do think that as part of that human development that, that they are at a point in their lives now when they can uh, look out of themselves and look at uh, the community and the world that they live in. And instead of just focusing on themselves, they are ready to focus outward and to, uh, and to look at, what, um, at, at the reality of the world and how they can play a part in it. They are at a perfect time to be cultivated for that and playing a part by bringing about change oh, yeah. for the betterment. Agents now, of change, yes. Okay, and Dave, we asked you to describe uh, that word ecumenical. 
Now, I'm going to ask Mary and Gail to help me with another word. We're talking about social justice. And social justice is a, um, a loaded term for many people of faith. Because social justice for one group may be this, and social justice for another group may be that. But what do you think where you are as a believer, as a person of faith, Gail? What does it mean to be involved in bringing about social justice in the well, community? I think we always say in Austin Metropolitan Ministries that um, within every faith community, there's truth and beauty and dignity within mm -hmm. our own faiths. And from this, we get our direction. Uh, to me, social justice is to act with equity to make um, opportunity available to all and to extend a hand. And we need to know how to do that across the town, not just within our own. And, and it will be so much more efficient Absolutely. if we are working together a instead of uh, uh, working in, in side purposes with one another, is that what I'm talking cross purposes with one another, right? Mm -hmm. Mary, what about you? Well, I was just thinking because I read it and I was reading uh, Albert Forsman's recent book and he quotes Micah, the lovely, um, mm -hmm quotation in chapter 6, I think it is in Micah, uh, this, uh, what does the Lord ask of you? Uh, to love justice. Uh, to do to, kindness. To do, yeah, or to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Yes. And I think that everybody, you know, sometimes we say, well, if an economy is doing well, all the boats are rising. But all the boats don't rise. Mm. And that it is the faith community must look out uh, for the boats that are sinking and the people that are drowning and the things that are not. And not Albert Vorspan well. is going to direct some of his comments, Gail, you think, towards those kinds of issues? I am quite sure he will. Also, I'd like to encourage people who've perhaps also never been to a synagogue. This is an opportunity to come to a synagogue exactly. and see what happens in other faiths, um, what it might even look like. And, um, and, and the location of the synagogue might be important so that people, when they're coming from different directions it's to get there, where is it? Very the centrally located at 4300 Bull Lake, um, very close to 35th Street in the center of town. And how wonderful the polis to have included not only a Jewish speaker but in a synagogue. I think it's a wonderful ecumenical gesture. Well, that's a perfect lead in, Dave. We just have a minute to go, so <laughs> say something about the polis, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Sure. We are uh, the very first religious order, Catholic religious order, founded in the United States in 1858. And ecumenism is big for us because our founder, Father Isaac Hecker, was a Protestant uh, before he became Catholic. Here, here. And <laughs> he, he had a, a dream in his heart to explain the Catholic faith to North America in the 1800s, which was not a very popular thing at that time. Well, we're grateful. Mary, thanks for being an Austin Faith Thank Dialogue. You. Dave, welcome to Austin. We're glad you're Thank here. You. Gail, always good to be with you. And we invite you, of the community, to come and be with us at the Dalton Lecture Series and to remember the call that God has given to us to bring about change and to see that which is right and beautiful and true in all faith communities. Thanks for being with us on Austin Faith Dialogue, and God bless you and your community of faith. We'll see you at the Dalton Lecture Series.